Hello again, everybody. I'm Roger Hoover. Glad to welcome you back to the Crimson Tide Sports Network and welcome to this Thursday edition of Crimson Drive driven by Tuscaloosa Toyota. Make sure you check them out online at TuscaloosaToyota.com. We're glad to have you with us as it's a really busy time here at the University of Alabama. One spring sports starting to wind down, some others starting to gear up for postseason competition. That'll be the focus of our show today. We'll go through all the different headlines for today. Thanks to our friends at RJ Young. They are the official technology solutions provider of Crimson Drive. And they've furnished us with this smart board to go through all of the different headlines for today. First of all, let's take a look at what's coming up on the show. We'll be hearing from Alabama baseball first baseman Drew Williamson. First things first, as we get to talk to him about his senior season, he's graduated from the University of Alabama, had a big home run last weekend against the Auburn Tigers. So he'll join us to talk about the season he's had and his Alabama career, plus preview what's coming up this weekend against Arkansas. Then we'll be talking with the head women's golf coach for the University of Alabama in Mick Potter, as he'll be previewing what's ahead for Alabama playing at the NCAA Championships starting Starting tomorrow out in Scottsdale, Arizona, congratulations to the women's golf team for advancing past last week's Franklin Regional, now on to the NCAA Championships. And then finally, we'll be joined by Brett Greenberg of the Tuscaloosa News as he does a great job covering Alabama softball for the T-News. So he'll give us a full preview of Alabama hosting the Tuscaloosa Regional coming up later in the show. Other headlines, we'll start with the Crimson Tide baseball team. Last weekend went 0-2 at Auburn, and yes, typically a three-game series, but the final game was washed out due to some rain, due to some lightning. Never could get that game completed. That was tied at one in the bottom of the fifth when it was suspended, then ultimately canceled. So 0-2 trip to the Plains as Alabama lost a tight game on Friday, 3-2, 6-4 after leading 4-0 early on Saturday. Now this weekend, the Crimson Tide home against the Arkansas Razorbacks. Arkansas is battling with Texas A&M for the SEC Western Division crown and A&M holds the tiebreaker over Arkansas. So important games for the Crimson Tide, as I mentioned, currently 10 and 16 in the SEC in 11th place right now in the league, just ahead of Kentucky. The top 12 teams in the SEC advance to next week's SEC baseball tournament in Hoover, Alabama. So the Crimson Tide have to finish in either 11th or 12th, really need some wins to help make sure they stay past not only Kentucky, but also knocking on the door, Mississippi State and Missouri only a couple losses behind Alabama, so critical games coming up. It's a Thursday through Saturday series tonight at 6, Friday at 7, Saturday at 1 here on the Crimson Tide Sports Network. And again, just the magnitude of these games cannot be uh, diminished because Alabama certainly needs wins. And then on the other side, Arkansas has a lot to play for trying to win the SEC West. And then the Razorbacks, they know they're going to be in the NCAA tournament, but they have a lower RPI this year. So maybe they won't get to host a regional or a super regional. That's certainly on the line for Arkansas as well. Plenty of storylines coming up for the Tide baseball team games coming up tomorrow at 3 p.m. We will have the booth cam available here on the CTSN Facebook page for the first game for sure and then hopefully later in the weekend as Alabama keeps advancing in softball and the winner of this regional will take on the winner of the Knoxville regional. Alabama is the number six national seed Tennessee the number 11 Ohio State's also in that Knoxville regional. We'll touch on this with Brett Greenberg in just a little bit but there are a lot of intriguing matchups for the super regionals that could be coming up next weekend if Alabama can advance and of course if you win the super regionals you go to Oklahoma City in the Women's College World Series. Final headlines for today across Crimson Tide Athletics. Uh, the golf team is competing in the NCAA Championships Friday through Wednesday. We'll have a full preview of that coming up with Mick Potter in just a few moments. Also, the volleyball team, Rashinda Reed, the new head coach of the volleyball team, she announced the schedule for this year, so a lot of great home matches coming up inside Foster Auditorium. We look forward to seeing more Crimson Tide volleyball, talking more about that over the summer as we get ready for the year. Also, Alabama Athletics has announced a lot of initiatives to celebrate the 50th anniversary of Tide. Nine. You can read more about that online on RollTide.com. And also the rowing team, 40 academic, all Big 12 honors. Yes, the rowing team competes in the Big 12. The SEC does not have enough teams in the league to have rowing as a sport, but Alabama has certainly been near the top of the Big 12 in rowing, and that will continue, and certainly in the classroom, leading the way with 40 academic, all Big 12 honorees. So that's what's coming up on the show today. Again, a very busy time at Alabama, starting with the Crimson Tide baseball team. And we certainly want to hear from one of the outstanding first basemen for the Crimson Tide, Drew Williamson. He's been playing a long time in a Crimson Tide uniform, and he joins us first today on Crimson Drive, driven by Tuscaloosa. Has it felt like a long time you've been wearing an Alabama uniform? 
it has. And at the same time, it feels like I just got here yesterday. You know, I've just been having so much fun since I got here and uh, it's gone by in the blink of an eye. I wish I could do it all again. Well, for you, a lot of great moments in your career. And let's start uh, by talking about your decision to come to Alabama. Obviously, you're from Bruton, went to T.R. Miller High School. Uh, were you always a big Alabama fan? I actually wasn't at all. I was actually a big Auburn fan growing up, as, as big as a surprise that may be. Uh, my family was all Auburn. My mom graduated from uh, Auburn. Both my grandparents on her side did. So I kind of grew up an Auburn fan. And probably when I was 14, 15, and started getting really serious into baseball is when I kind of let that that uh, fandom kind of go and uh, <laughs> I fell in love with Alabama you know the the second I stepped on the campus um but yeah that was about it what was your first iron bowl like when you were on the other side wearing crimson <laughs> it was uh it was a little surreal it was it was definitely different but um I don't know after being here for a couple of years I think you forget all about the the Auburn side I only remember this side <laughs> so we like to hear well uh for you uh putting together quite a solid senior season had a home run against the Auburn Tigers uh last Friday what do you remember about the home run you hit at Plainsman Park uh, I know it felt good uh got a fastball middle ends able to put some good bat on it and uh it felt good to build a run around the base was there at uh Plainsman Park it was a uh it was a fun moment well, it's been good to see you this season and be a really well-rounded hitter. Is that an approach that you've really been proud of uh, in what your at-bats and what you've been able to do this year? Yeah, I think it's just really trusting the process and trusting uh, all the work that I've done, all the at-bats that I've had. Um, I've gotten in trouble in the past whenever I'm trying to kind of guard breaking pitches, trying not to strike out, trying not to do this, not to do that. Uh, whenever I get up there and I just hit the way that I always have is whenever I have the best results. And for you as well, uh, we've heard the coaching staff talk about all the work you've put in in the weight room. What can you tell us about the work that you've done uh, with Brett Price over the years? I tell you what, Brett Price is the man. That is, uh, he really knows what he's doing. And I put on, when I got here, I was about 195 pounds and I'm sitting now at about 225. And at the end of last fall, I was about 235. So, they really know between him and our uh, nutritionist, Amanda, they really know how to uh, put some weight on you. So what does a, a typical Drew Williamson workout look like? <laughs> well, it's whatever Brett Price writes up for me. But uh, we, we do like a, a four week, day a week split, usually during the fall. It's Monday, Thursday, lower body, Tuesday, Friday's upper body. And uh, they're about an hour and a half long. And we hit just about every muscle group you could think of. So uh, well, well, it's led to some good results for you and for the rest of the Crimson Tide this season. Just how have you guys in the locker room kind of managed the ups and downs that this season has brought? Well, I think you just you just have to keep enjoying playing the game. You know, no matter – there's ups and downs in baseball. You're going to catch lulls every now and then, and you just have to stick with what you know works and um, not lose faith in the end goal and – just keep trusting uh, that you put in the work and that if you keep competing and keep coming every single day, that it'll turn around and uh, we'll start winning some games. Is that a message that Coach Bahannon has been giving you guys throughout the last few weeks? Absolutely, yeah. I think I think that's the only message to get right now. You know, when the ball's not rolling your way and, I mean, we've lost, I don't even know how many one-run games, just you just got to just keep bringing it, keep competing, and then uh, that's just how baseball works, and it'll turn around eventually. Well, now the Crimson Tide get to close out the regular season at home against the Arkansas Razorbacks. Just how fired up for you uh, for this series that's coming up against Arkansas? Well, it's awesome to um, – I know – I love the feeling of being able to control your own destiny, and I know that we can do that the rest of the way out. And you've put in all the work. Now it's just time to go finish, you know. Our back's up against the wall, and we just got to be able to go and finish the season off. Do you love home games at the Joe? I do. I love the environment, love our feel, love our surface, everything about it. It's a great spot. And for you as well, it was pretty special a few weeks ago, graduation weekend, you receive a diploma and also get to play baseball in the same weekend. What was that like? <laughs> yeah, it is cool. It's surreal, man. I, I never really thought, you know, getting here, you don't think as much about the graduation. You just focus, you know, every day, what do I got to do today? What do I got to do today? And um, to see it, um, manifest into a four-year degree is is pretty special it was cool to get to have all my friends and family and you know it, it was a very surreal day but it was amazing it's a good experience 
Well, for you at first base, uh, obviously, guys, get on base. You get to talk to them a little bit. Have you enjoyed meeting some of the best players from around the SEC? And I imagine even in a lot of our in-state, you know, midweek games, you see a lot of former um, teammates or guys you played against in high school. Oh, yeah. You already know a ton of guys after coming in from high school with the travel ball circuit and how all that is these days. So I knew a ton of people coming in and then you play here for four more years and you really get to learn kind of everybody in the league and especially all the guys that play in Alabama, you know, us and Auburn and UAB and Jacksonville State and all those guys. So <clears throat> I've got buddies on just about every single team we play and it. It's fun watching everybody progress alongside you, watching everybody grow up. And But yeah. It's, it's a lot of fun. Do you have any go-to like small talk lines when a guy gets on base or are you <laughs> the first base coach, the umpire all around? No, I think they're usually pretty personalized, but uh, no, I don't have any go-tos. Well, now you're getting ready again for Arkansas to close out the year, hopefully a trip to the SEC tournament, NCAA tournament after that. Just for you, as we wrap things up, what's most important for you and your approach over the next few games? I think it's just keeping the passion for the game. I mean, you know, I've got one more year of eligibility here, but it's playing the game like this is the last time I'm ever going to play it. You know, I'm, I'm trying to treat this season like it's the last one that I'll ever play here. And uh, just bringing that intent and focus to the field is going to be my edge for the next few days. Certainly sounds good. Well, Drew Williamson, thank you for joining us on Crimson Drive, driven by Tuscaloosa Toyota, and all the best against the Razorbacks this weekend. Roll Tide. All right, thank you. Roll Tide. You can catch Drew Williamson at first base for the Crimson Tide baseball team at Sewell Thomas Stadium the next three days, tonight, tomorrow night, and also Saturday afternoon as the Crimson Tide wrap up the regular season, and a lot will really depend on how Alabama plays against Arkansas to determine, first of all, whether they advance to the SEC tournament next week in Hoover, Alabama, and then beyond that to the NCAA regionals. So a lot on the line for the Tide baseball team. And again, we appreciate Drew Williamson for joining us and talking about his career and this season of Tide baseball. You can catch Alabama women's golf head coach Mick Potter right now in Scottsdale, Arizona. The Crimson Tide gear up for the NCAA championships. Alabama qualified for that by finishing second in the NCAA Franklin Regional just over a week ago. But the Crimson Tide are playing really good golf heading into the championships. And it is the 10-year anniversary of Alabama's national championship in women's golf back in 2012. So before the team hit the road to Scottsdale, we had a chance to catch up with Mick Potter, the head coach of Alabama women's golf. Coach, just roll tide. Congratulations on advancing past the Franklin Regional and moving on to the NCAA Championships. How's everything going? Well, roll tide to you. It's been a, a really fun year. Um, we've seen a lot of progress. Uh, we have been peaking at the right time, I think, and hopefully we can continue to improve. And, um, you know, if, if we tr go the way we're trending, it should be a fun week. Yeah, what can you tell us just in your own words about the journey this team has been on? What were some of the big inflection points of getting Alabama to this point? Well, you know, I thought we had a, a pretty solid team last year, but for some reason it just never clicked. Um, we'd, we'd be on the verge and we'd make a big score, a, a double, triple, quadruple bogey that would, would derail us. And it just seemed like it happened pretty consistently. So we, we did a lot of work on course management and avoiding big numbers and managing our games and playing, eliminating risk uh, as much as possible. Um, you know, the improvement that, of Poly Mac has been um, a big piece of what we've accomplished. Uh, Benedetta Moresco is a, an internationally known great player. And then um, Angelica Moresco back from from sickness and injury last year has been an important piece as well. Uh, she would have been a difference maker last year, but she just wasn't able to, to play. Uh, so that has helped. And then um, the emergence of Isabella Vanderbees, frightened coming freshman, took her a, a semester to get her feet on the ground, but she's really helped us this spring. Uh, transfer from Florida Gulf Coast, Sarah Edwards. It's been a, a big piece culturally and score wise. And Emily Overas has been our, our other girl that has improved consistently. And, you know, it all kind of came together uh, the way we hoped it would at the end of last year. But, um, this, you know, it takes time sometimes for the process to, to work. Well, let's talk about Polly Mack for a moment. What led to some of her low scores that we saw in Franklin as she ends up uh, winning the Franklin Regional, having the lowest score there? Just some great results for her this past week. Well, you know, Polly's really long. 
And it, it was hard for her, especially at the end of last year, to, to kind of harness that and understand that being long doesn't necessarily produce low scores. It's how you manage that. And uh, she has been very coachable. She listens. And, you know, with her kind of skill set, she really didn't have to. She could have said, well, I'm going to do it my way. But she's learned that hitting an iron off the tee is beneficial to her because she hits a two iron farther than most college players hit drivers. So if she can do that and keep it in play, sometimes aimed in the middle of the green, if there are risky hole locations. And to her credit, she realized she needed to be a better putter if she was going to play professionally. And she really went to work on it. She's become a, become a well above average putter and wedge player. So yeah, it's just, it's fun to watch. And then for Benedetta Moresco, she's had really consistent results all throughout her time at Alabama. What's she doing really well right now? Well, and that's just it. She's very consistent in her ball striking. Uh, she drives and play. She's a good iron player. She's a great putter. Uh, she's worked hard on her chipping and that has improved. And that was kind of the missing piece last year and maybe in the fall as well, but become a better chipper. Um, so, you know, she's uh, the real deal and has won big tournaments and she knows how to compete when the pressure's on. Now, of course, pressure's always on in college golf, and you spoke of the adjustment we've had to see from Isabella Vanderbeest, who was also named to the SEC All-Freshman team. Uh, just what were some of those moments you saw from her that showed that she was adjusting a little bit and actually contributing for this Alabama team? Well, you know, and it's really important that when you step up to every shot, you believe in yourself and your ability to, to pull off that shot. And uh, in the beginning, uh, you know, I'm not sure she thought she really belonged, but as she realized that she had as much game as, as anybody, uh, the confidence grew and, and her ability to stand there and say, hey, I can execute this as well as anybody um, was, was the biggest thing for her, I think. And, and also short game, she, she was a very average putter at first, worked hard on it, made some changes and has become a, a, a very good putter and, and chips the ball well now, which she didn't in the beginning. So. You know, having a great short game is important because when you stand over full shots and you're and you say to yourself, well, you know, if I don't hit a perfect shot, I have a short game and I can chip it in or I can get it up and down. It's, it's very comforting and it takes some of the pressure off. Golf is such a mental game, especially when you get to a stage of the season like we are. You just finished up the NCAA regional. Now you're gearing up for the NCAA championships. Just how much do you and Susan kind of focus on the mental side of the game at this time of the year? Almost exclusively. So, you know, our, our whole thing now is to keep them off the driving range and on the golf course. So, uh, you know, I believe the best training takes place on the golf course where you put yourself in a position to have to hit a shot. Um, now, I'll be honest with you, Susan and I play our scramble against their ball, and that's the ultimate pressure for them. So, um, so it, uh, you know, we're working on it, and we're, of course, we're we're talking trash to each other and we're, we're putting in a, in a situation where they have, have to perform. Um, yeah, it, I mean, it's all believing in yourself, believing in your teammates, understanding you don't have to do it all by yourself. Uh, and, you know, when it comes down to it in golf, the only important shot is the next shot. And so, you know, to get on the first tee at the national championship and believe that that you can hit the shot you that it's that it calls for that's what we focus on well the ncaa championship starts on friday in scottsdale arizona at the great hawk golf club it will be playing the raptor course just first of all what can you tell us about this golf course is it more kind of desert style as opposed to what we've seen alabama compete on the last few weeks here in the south yeah it's it's a lot of desert um and you want to avoid the desert because there are there's a lot of cactus <laughs> in the desert. Um, so, you know, they the rough isn't dissimilar to what we're used to. Um, it's fescue. They grow it up some from this tournament. We have a, some girls that have played in the AJGA Thunderbird tournament there. It's a little different than what it was for them. They cut some of the rough in. It's a little longer. The greens 
though, are, are very similar to, you know, where we've played at, at Vanderbilt um, here at North River and in Indian Hills. Um, and uh, we played Country Club of Birmingham the other day, very similar to those. So I feel comfortable with green speeds and chipping around the green. Uh, there are a lot of tabletop section greens. And, and the, the key here is your approach shots getting on the right level on the, on the green. So hopefully we can control our golf ball and give ourselves some chances and make some putts. And then what can you tell our fans about the format of the championships? What should they be watching for starting with Friday's action? Uh, we start stroke play Friday. Uh, and it's so the first 54 holes stroke play after 54, they cut to the top 15 teams. And then the 15, top 15 teams play Monday, also stroke play. And after that, they cut to eight, and it goes into match play. So match play, uh, if you're in the top eight Tuesday, you would play a quarterfinal match and then a semifinal match. Sorry. Um, yeah, semifinal match. And so then the top two teams advance to Wednesday morning or Wednesday afternoon, I guess it would be here. Um, and it's and it's match play from there on in. So five players, each one is a point. So the, the key is to get to three points in those matches. Is this a week when your phone is always blowing up from Alabama alums who are cheering on the Crimson Tide, hoping they can bring back a national championship to Tuscaloosa like we saw earlier in 2012? Yeah, we had a, um, had a lot of calls and, and texts after the uh, Vanderbilt Regional. And, and so the Vanderbilt, the, the regional format, has changed. So we went to six regionals this year, only four teams advance. And that is not a lot of teams. And there are a lot of good teams in the field. So that's become more stressful. Um, it's become more demanding. And, it, you know, again, managing risk is really important in those tournaments. So I was really proud of the girls and the way they handled, handled that. Yeah, you know, it's, the girls that were on the national championship team in 2012, I think they'd like to, it's a 10 year anniversary. So they'd probably like to see us win again. Um, I'd like to see us win again, but again, the only important thing and the only way to accomplish that is to be ready for that first tee shot on Friday and, and go from there and take it one shot at a time. Look forward to watching all the results coming in from Scottsdale over the weekend as Alabama competes for the national championship in women's golf. Coach Potter, just thank you for joining us. Have a safe trip out west and best of luck. Roll Tide. Thank you, Roger. Roll Tide. Good luck to Coach Potter and the Crimson Tide. Hopefully another championship year for Alabama women's golf. And again, play starts with the stroke play portion of the event coming up tomorrow at the NCAA championships in Scottsdale. Certainly wish all the best to Coach Potter and the Crimson Tide. Speaking of an NCAA championship, the road to a championship for the Alabama softball team begins tomorrow. The Crimson Tide will start play in the Tuscaloosa Regional at Rhodes Stadium. And to get up to date on everything Alabama softball, plus preview this weekend's action, we check in with Brett Greenberg, who covers Alabama softball for the Tuscaloosa News and gives us a good idea of where Alabama stands heading into the Tuscaloosa Regional. Brett, it is time for regional play in the NCAA tournament. Alabama's at home in Tuscaloosa. It's an exciting time of the year. Absolutely. No, you hit it right on the uh, right nail on the coffin right there. Clearly, it's been a quite a busy 24 hours in the college football realm. But, you know, like you said, the SEC, uh, NCAA softball tournament's getting started. It's that time of year. Uh, Alabama's hosting for the 18th consecutive season, they've hold a 43-game uh, win streak going into this. They host Murray State, Stanford, and Chattanooga. They got a uh, game at 3 o'clock tomorrow versus Chattanooga. Um, should be a good good regional round. I expect them to, you know, advance. Um, Chattanooga is a team that is experiencing their first uh, NCAA tournament uh, bid. So, you know, they're going to get over here and experience the road. So I think that will be a little bit too much for them in terms of, uh, you know, the two seat Stanford, they've been over here quite a few times. They're actually in the regional, I believe in tw or super regionals down here in 2019 when Alabama advanced, they've been a little bit down the last couple of years, but they're now back at the top. They uh, have had the most wins since 2013 this year. And then uh, one team in particular Murray state, they're an interesting case. Um, they've got a lot of good talent. They've just won their, uh, division their uh, conference tournament as well and uh, real quick I do want to give my thoughts and prayers to everyone involved in the um, crash at Murray State um, they were traveling down to Tuscaloosa last night and it was reported that three people were uh, hospitalized with non-lightning 
injuries. And uh, I will say we'll have more on that later on via Tuscaloosa News as we learn more. So for the Crimson Tide, just take me through the journey that this team has been on throughout the year. I believe they're a preseason pick to win the SEC. Ultimately, Arkansas wins the SEC championship. Just what's been some of the ups and downs for Patrick Murphy's team this spring? Yeah, so, I mean, I, I think you kind of break this into two, two parts, so to speak. You know, everybody saw it. You, they tra- you traveled to Arizona, and you hand Arizona an 11-0 loss with the most scores, you, most runs you ever scored against them, and they get shut out on the – at home so I mean you're coming home you're feeling good the next couple of weeks you continue to hit the ball everybody's hitting the ball they're talking about how this team is unable to slump might have the inability to slump and Montana Fouts is rolling Lexi Kilfoyle is pitching good Murphy's talked about it earlier in the year getting Alex Salter and Jayla Torrance those extra work and it looked like everything was going well fast forward you know April 22nd Texas A&M series we get Lexi Kilfoyle out uh, due to undisclosed injury um the team and the offense just certainly dropped off. I mean, from from the last eight games, I think they're they're batting somewhere around 0.093 with runners in scoring position. They're run, they're batting about 106 with runners on, and that's something that Murphy's been harping on the past month, and something that we've been talking about is kind of being a being a dead horse at this point. But I mean, he's talked about how important it is to extend those innings, and that's something that just they have not done at all. Um, one thing in particular that Missouri lost in the SEC tournament. They got the lead runner on in five of those innings. I mean, they're batting 316 in the last eight games with the lead runner on, but they didn't have more than four batters in the, uh, a single inning that game. And you can't win if you can't score runs. And that's something that Murphy talked about. Um, and he talked about how they were going to do a lot of competitive work this week. And he said he's liked uh, what he's seen and kind of get in kind of like a make it take it type thing to at practice because it's so hard to replicate, you know, extending the innings and stuff like that and that's just been an issue and one thing also is this team will need some innings from Alex Salter and Jayla Torrance and if Lexi Kofoil is back he's, she's going to need some innings well because I mean we all know Montana Fouts and how great she is and stuff like that but you've got to think these innings are going to catch up to her at some point and just with more film it's just gonna it's it's just not a good recipe. Looking at the offense for the Crimson Tide, who are the two or three really key players that really have to click it in uh, coming up this weekend in order for Alabama to be successful? Absolutely. It's it's kind of funny. The two I would name you are probably the transfers, and it's probably been the two best hitters all year. Uh, I mean, the beginning of the season, Allie Shipman came in here and Murphy talked about it. No, she was supposed to be good. No one expected her to be that good in terms of turning out RBIs. I mean, she had the most multi-hit games, most RBI games. And so she, she's she been a catalyst for this team um, of late. She's struggled just like everybody else. So I think she's going to be a big part of that, especially in that 3-4 spot. And then on the other side, the other transfer, the Ohio State transfer, Ashley Prangy, who, you know, she's been hitting well all, all season, more or less. And she's continuing to get on. I think she needs to continue to get on and uh, in big spots and to, you know, for the likes of Kaylee Tao and Ali Shipman to knock her in. And another one in particular, I would probably say what needs to have maybe a good weekend, a surprise weekend as someone who's kind of been struggling recently is Jenna Johnson. And I think she, she, she's, I mean, if you remember, she was the lead off, she lead off batter at the beginning of the season. And Murphy talked about how great she is and can really extend that, extend that bats. And she's continued. I mean, I think she's had like five at bats this season of 15 plus pitches and she can really get on base and, you know, get something going. So I think as long as she gets going and those two other keep going and, you know, likes of Bailey Dowling with the threats of home runs, stuff like that, this team can really get going. And it's really, you know, Murph, Murphy said, it, all it takes is one to just get going. And, and you know it better than I am and all the fans know, well, you're behind the road stadium house. They know how to cheer. Murphy talked about it. It's the coolest relationship in sports. He says that they know when they'd be behind them. And at, at the Rhodes house, it's just, it's just a different environment. And I realize Coach Murphy's meeting with the media later on Thursday, so we may hear more about this later, but just where do things stand right now for Lexi Kilfoyle in terms of her availability? So it's it's been tough. I mean, it, ever since that April 22nd game where she pitched those 2.1 innings and gave up six earned runs, she didn't really look great. Um, early in the season, she dealt with some injuries. She had a she had a boot on her right foot multiple times, and um, she, she sat a couple of weekends, and while she was traveling, she was using the boot, and that was just precautionary per Murphy, and that's that's very uh, normal with football or any sport that is. Um, but you know, it, it's just been weird. There hasn't been really much on it, and Murphy's kind of just it's day to day right now, and they're taking it one day at a time. Um, I really can't speak to as much because Murphy hasn't been giving it too much, but I'll, I will uh, try to get some more out of that this afternoon, certainly. 
Certainly understand. So again, the Crimson Tide will start their run in the NCAA tournament against Chattanooga, a team that's playing hot right now. Winners of six straight just won the SOCON. That's the first matchup. And then, as you mentioned earlier, a Stanford and Murray State, there's so much talent beyond the Crimson Tide in this region. No, absolutely. And you talked about, it. I mean, I, Murray State said they got the coach of the year, they got the player of the year, um, and they, they're, they're rolling right now. Or, excuse me, Chattanooga's rolling right now. They've won six straight. And I mean, they, they've got a he heck of a lot of talent. You've got two tournament champions in this field, which is anytime you have a tournament champion, it's it's they've 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 earned it. And a Stanford team is no no short. I mean, just because they're not a national seed where they normally are does not mean they're not good. And I mean, they they're back to where they need to be for sure. So I mean, this is going to be a tough regional. I do believe they'll move on just with you know behind the road stadium crowd and maybe not these. At batters having as much film on Montana Fouts. And whereas, you know, in the SEC, you see it. These in Missouri, for example, facing Montana Fouts for fourth time in eight days. It's hard to it's hard to continue to strike out 15 batters a game when you when you face when they're facing you for the you know 15th at bat in a week. So for the Crimson Tide hosting the Tuscaloosa Regional, and if they're able to advance, again, the team's not going to look past this weekend, but you and I can, uh, then they would face likely Tennessee, a team that's hosting the Knoxville Regional. Just what kind of matchup would that be at the road to You get the rivalry of Alabama and Tennessee, but really two outstanding softball teams if that turns out to be the matchup next weekend. Yeah, yeah, Murphy's going to get mad at me because he doesn't like looking ahead. But <laughs> He's not watching right now. Like you worry. said, you like you said we, we certainly can. And No, there's certainly multiple storylines in there. Uh, number one, Ali Shipman, the Tennessee transfer. So there's the storyline right there. Um, I'm not sure if you remember, but last year they were in the SEC tournament semifinal. Um, Tennessee was up in the sixth inning. Bailey Hemphill hit a go-ahead uh, record-breaking home run to take the lead. And then Montana Fouts came in to close the, uh, close the door on Tennessee to advance to the championship game. And something kind of cool, I guess, Ali Shipman was the final out in that game. Montana Fouts struck her out looking. So, I mean, we've talked about that. There's, they've moved on from that. They're now one of the better batteries in uh, college softball. But, no, I mean, there's certainly a rivalry there. You, you know all too well about Tennessee, Alabama, and them coming back here trying to look for revenge. And on top of that, Ashley Rogers is one of the most decorated SEC pitchers we've had. And we, we saw that last week. She's fully healthy, and she pitched, I think it's nine innings of three-hit ball or whatever it was in the first round of SEC tournament. And I've been privy enough to see Rodgers versus Fouts, I think it's four times live. And it's not only is it usually a quick game, it's there's a lot of strikes thrown, certainly. And then one another side, the two seed over there is Ohio State. So there's certainly some storylines there as well with Prangy coming over there. So that'll be really entertaining. But first things first, Alabama needs to advance past this Tuscaloosa Regional. And before we let you go, Brett, just what can you tell our fans about coverage you will have coming up in the Tuscaloosa News and what they can expect over the next few days? Yeah, absolutely. So, like I said, I'm with the Tuscaloosa News. Uh, we'll have coverage all throughout the week with uh, NCAA tournament coverage. Um, we've got picks on there. As soon as the Super Regionals come out, we'll have their expert picks up there. I'm not considering myself an expert, but that's what USA Today considers me. Um, we'll see. Don't don't come back to me on my picks, but we've got a great team over here. We've got a great coverage of Alabama baseball at their last season with Max Waborski. We've got Nick Kelly over here who's do, done a great job with us and so many more guys. And if you don't follow along already, I'd love for you guys to do so. And as always, you'll get everything first at at 74 talk on Twitter with all things Alabama softball and other athletics. Brett Greenberg covers Alabama softball as well as a variety of Crimson Tide athletics for the Tuscaloosa News. Just Brett, thank you for your time and your insights on the Crimson Tide softball team. Thank you for joining us. All right, Roger. Have a good day. Appreciate the time. Uh, Brett Greenberg has been covering uh, Media Day at Road Stadium this afternoon. So, again, he'll have the very latest coming up in the Tuscaloosa News. And, of course, we'll have the broadcast coming up of Alabama softball in the Tuscaloosa Regional coming up this weekend. With that in mind, let's take a look at our schedule for the Crimson Tide Sports Network this weekend. Later today, it's Alabama baseball against Arkansas. 6 p.m. at Sewell Thomas Stadium. Chris Stewart, Lee Tracy will have the call coming up later tonight. We will have a booth cam available on the CTSN Facebook page, so make sure you come right back here for that coming up. And then on Friday, we know the softball team will play at 3 o'clock against Chattanooga. Should have a booth cam for Tom Canterbury, Gray Robertson for that game coming up tomorrow. Possibly baseball as well, but that'll be uh, the second game coming up tomorrow. 7 p.m. against Arkansas, second game in the series coming up. And then on Saturday, 
It's the baseball team closing out the regular season against the Razorbacks at 1 p.m. We know softball will play either at 2 p.m. or 4.30. And really, the rest of the regional really all depends on whether or not Alabama stays in the winner's bracket. We'd love to, of course, see them advance to 2 o'clock on Saturday, Sunday at 1 o'clock, and advance to the Super Regional. But times are going to be in flux, and that could also change depending on the weather as well. So CTS and social media outlets plus RollTide.com will have the latest information on everything there. And then the next week, we hope the baseball team is in the SEC tournament in Hoover, Alabama. We hope softball as well is moving on to the Super Regionals. We'll have much more coverage coming up next week on Crimson Drive at 2 p.m. on Thursday. But for this Thursday, that's going to wrap up this edition of Crimson Drive, driven by Tuscaloosa Toyota. Make sure you check them out online at TuscaloosaToyota.com. Huge thank you to the guests we've had today, Drew Williamson of the Tide baseball team, Mick Potter of the Alabama women's golf team. Good luck to them coming up tomorrow in Scottsdale, starting their run in the NCAA championships. And then Brett Greenberg of the Tuscaloosa News, previewing the Alabama softball Tuscaloosa Regional that begins tomorrow. Thanks as well to our producer, Ethan Carabin, for putting this show together. And thanks to all of you for watching on this very busy Thursday of Alabama Athletics. Roll Tide, everyone.